Hi, I'm Patrick Prince, joined by columnist Bill Haston. Uh, Bill, breaking news on the TU front. After eight season, Philip Montgomery and TU have decided to part ways. Uh, eight season, five of those losing seasons, four bowl seasons, uh, two wins, two losses in bowls. Uh, is this the right decision? You like it or don't like it? Well, it's interesting uh, just from a historic standpoint that the last time TU changed football coaches, and for that matter, basketball coaches in you know in the same calendar year was when they hired Philip. They hired uh, Philip in December of fourteen after having hired Frank Hay in April, I think, of fourteen. Uh, and so eight years later, eight years is a pretty good sample size, I think, on where you stand. And I think after eight years, you kind of know uh, to you kind of realize you know where it is. Uh, and, and for that matter, I, I have watched every TU game this season, and I have detected, this is just my perception, but I've detected with Phillip some real emotional fatigue. That's a hard job, uh, Patrick. Uh, I think the TU basketball job is a great job. I think the TU football job is a really hard job uh, because of the very limit, uh, great limits with regard to university support, financing, um, it's it's a tough football gig, really tough. So eight years of Philip. This is for the program overall. Going back to uh, the thirteen and fourteen seasons, this is the seventh losing season in ten years. So I just think there's a uh, you know nobody at TU. I never I never sensed anybody at TU disliking Philip, disapproving even of Philip. I mean, it's just after eight years, you kind of think start to think, man, you know. Uh, Let's maybe let's see what it looks like with some fresh energy. And I think that's that's the biggest factor in why this was done. Eight years, Philip, uh, 42 and 54 record. Uh, and if you ask me, you like what went wrong, I would center it ultimately, I think, on the really inconsistent play at quarterback since Dane Evans. Dane Evans. He inherited Philip inherited Dane Evans, who was a developing player, and he and Philip did an amazing job with helping to continue with that development. Dane becomes a great player at GU. They get a two bowl teams, two bowl seasons out of out of Dane's two years with Philip. Of course, the second year was ten a ten win season, mm -hmm. and, and yeah. you know uh, record breaking offensive uh, numbers that year. So, uh, and since then, there's just been this. Uh, re either uh, the range of performance at quarterback has been from either like really poor to mediocre to occasionally really good, but not consistently really good, you know? So I, I think that's such an important position. And, you know, I know it drives Philip crazy because he's the quarterback coach right. and the offensive coach ultimately. So um, who do they call first? Uh, it, I don't know, you know, I have discussed this with Rick Dixon, not specifically names, but, you know, just, you know, uh, but it's been months and months since we talked about it. But when Rick Dixon and I talked about anything regarding football and basketball months ago, it was more in much bigger, big picture terms. And then so now here we are at, at the very, very, very front end of a coaching search for TU football. Although you never know, has Rick Dixon been looking at names and talking with people, networking for the last couple of months. I don't know. I don't know. Typically an AD would do that though. Yeah, uh, sure. You have to be prepared. So right. the first name that comes to my mind is an, is the wide receivers coach at Alabama. His name's Holman, H-O-L-M-O-N, Holman Wiggins. I believe he's a California native, but he's a 42 year old guy who's been on the Bama staff since 2019. He's the guy who identified Cole Adams and said, hey, got involved, came here, and he's the guy who beat OU for Cole Adams, Holman Wiggins. Now, what the reason he comes to mind so readily for me is because he used to coach it to you, albeit one season, but he was with Bill Blankenship there in 2011. That relationship with Blankenship, that relationship with Bill Blankenship 
uh, was massively important in, in Alabama getting a commitment from Cole Adams, the wide receiver from, from Owasso. I just, I, I, everything I, I, I know, I have never even met Holman Wiggins, although he was there one day when Mike Simons were, and I were there to work on one of the Cole Adams pieces. And I just wanted, I desperately wanted to go upstairs and say, uh, you know, knock on the door and, and, and meet the guy, just meet him, you know? Uh, but anyway, yeah. so, 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 but what we don't know is whether Rick Dixon more immediately is thinking of established head coach, a guy with some experience as a head coach, like a Matt Wells, who has mm -hmm. a total history and, you know, a head guy in the Big 12 and a head guy in the Mountain West. Or, you know, or is, is somebody going to come in uh, who we're not even thinking about or even aware of? As, as a possibility right now. And I'm kind of inclined to think it's the latter because so many of the TU coaching searches I covered, like Frank Hayes, uh, you know, I thought I was all over it and I thought I knew every detail about the search and I, I was always so confident that I knew who they were going to hire or believed I knew who they were going to hire and then they'd hire somebody completely off the grid like Doug Wojcik or Frank yeah. Hayes. So, uh, but... What about G.J. Kinney? There, there, uh, G.J. Kinney's uh, uh, had a great first season uh, and played his – he's only 33, you know, uh, and played at TU as recently as 2011. Good grief. And now here he is, uh, you know, as a rookie head coach. And maybe I should have mentioned him first because of his TU tie, because he played at TU as recently as 11 years ago and was a really good player there and a very – you know, popular player at TU. Yeah. Uh, not to mention, he hails from uh, East Texas. Uh, so you presume he's got a million relationships mm -hmm. you know, that would serve him well in recruiting. He's at Incarnate Word in San Antonio now, which is a cool little campus, by the way. Uh, that's where OSU used to practice for the Alamo Bowl. No, it's not. That's where the opponent used to, but I used to go to practices there. Anyway, so... Um, G.J. Kenny, absolutely, at 33, you know, you say, oh, my Lord, that's young. Well, that's two years older than Dave Rader was when he got that job in 88 or 87, 88. And so, uh, like I say, I mean, the I, I just think if you put up a whiteboard and start scratching names, you could put 40 names up there. And, and ultimately, the person who gets this job might not be on your initial list. But there, I do think there's one <laughs> – I think there's one – Massively interesting wild card. Uh, is, is this where you go to the high school ranks, Bill? With who you're about to suggest? Who am I about to suggest? Go ahead. Lauren Montgomery. Mm -hmm. I know you're a big fan of his. And I I mean, I'll just let you say it. You, you brought it up to me before. I'll just let you, get, let you go. Well, I mean, if TU doesn't really, really uh, examine – Lauren Montgomery and and determine how and why he's been able to build this juggernaut in Bixby, Oklahoma. Uh, they're doing a disservice to their fan base and to themselves. You got to find Lauren's 44 years old. Uh, I think Lauren, this is this is my opinion. I've been around him a lot the last two years. I think he's a genius. I think he's a football genius. Um Everybody's got a football program. Lauren Montgomery has a football system. And you say, yeah, well, okay. Uh, he's never coasted down a football uh, above the high school level, which is totally true. I mean, he, but he, but if you look at his pedigree as well, where did he go to Bixby from? Jinx. He was an Allen Trimble guy for 10 years. Uh, he's, in fact, his, his career is, his football life really mirrors Allen Trimble's in such mm -hmm. a striking way, both small town Oklahoma kids, uh, both played at NSU, both offensive linemen. Uh, I think Laura Montgomery's a football genius. And I would, uh, if I'm Tulsa, uh, I, I, I do my homework on this guy. I get to know this guy. And I ask those questions. How have you done this? Because I believe what he has done to make Bixby amazing is going to work at any level of football because it's so heavily uh, centered on what you do in the off season. And, and I do think they are clever with their play call calls. And I do think they're, 
they're uh, you know they're just so fundamentally uh, consistently amazing over there. And so you have to take a look at, at Laura Montgomery. I, I believe he's right here. And, and there's one other aspect of this, uh, Patrick, I, I think we should mention. And when Bill Blankenship was in his final season there, he was making $560,000. And I know it's at one point, Philip was making right around a million and a half. And Frank Haith at one time was making, I believe, $1.6 million. And so it was explained to me, oh, goodness, nine, ten years ago, you know, by a TU person, well, D Derek Gregg, one of my, I mean, it was Derek Gregg. And he told me, we have to juice these salaries for these coaches because we're going to the American Conference. And it's it's a bigger conference. It's more prestige. It's it's bigger and more of everything than Conference USA was, right? So mm -hmm. he's, we're, to, to, to attract and keep good coaches, we're going to have to pay them more. And my response was, but, but how can you spend the money if you don't have it to start with? Because TU is so limited in their resources. And so I think there is a, I think there is a collective uh, desire at TU. And by collective, I mean from the very top of the administration down to athletics, to maybe get a better handle on their finances. I still haven't determined what, or, or I don't know what, what Eric Conkle is making, but I'm confident it's substantially less. It's a respectable amount of money, but, but it's, it's less than what Frank was making. And I think to you would like to hire a football coach. I'll just throw a number out for like $800,000, $750,000. And then, and then the key for everything for to you, today, tomorrow, and forever is when Rick Dixon does go back into retirement, Patrick, it's so critically important to, that his successor is a successful fundraiser uh, because yep. he really, really, uh, really fell behind on fundraising for several years there. So, um, but I think that you know, if TU says, yeah, uh, our football job's an $800,000 job, is that going to keep a lot of candidates from pursuing it? Nope. No, it will not. There will still be a lot of really good candidates who who want to be an FBS head coach. And sure. and they'll believe that they're the ones who can who can get that consistency, uh, who can do what Todd Graham did, you know, three 10-win seasons in a four-year period. Um, so, so anyway, it, it's it's – like I say, I, I, I'm not saying Tulsa football is not a good job. I'm saying it's a hard job. I think Tulsa basketball is a great job, but I do think the football job is really hard. Uh, but also, you know, I would like to see the next coach put a greater uh, emphasis on local recruiting because every week I see kids I, who I know could be developed into difference makers or at least contributors at TU, and they never – during the Philip Montgomery era, those kids are getting – most of those kids are getting overlooked. And I've never understood the logic of if a player in Tulsa County is right here and another player in East Texas is the exact same kid with the same ceiling for development, why the preference on signing the East Texas kid? I mean, go, I mean ha, I'm not saying load up with 65 or 80 Tulsa County kids on the roster, but – but I do know, I mean, I, I went to Jinx practice recently, and there's eight guys, maybe 12 guys on that roster, 10, 12th grade down through 10th, who could play football at Tulsa. I'd be interested to know ultimately how many of those guys are, you know, get involved. Uh, how many of those guys are, are contacted by TU, really truly evaluated by TU, uh, and how many of those guys end up at TU. There's a 10th grader at TU right now who, if I were a Tulsa football coach, I'd offer him today, today. And I Who's know that? Hudson Ball, 6'3", 228-pound defensive end, who's who's going to be a uh, – you know, like when you say Jinx football and you say Kiwan Jones and Rocky Kalmus and Stephen Parker, and, and you know what I mean? That certain guys just you'll, – you'll never forget them. It's been 25 years since Rocky Thomas played football at Jinx, and yet he'll always be a Jinx. Let Hudson Ball will be on that on that line of, of Jinx 
legendary stardom. You'll see. Wow. Just, right. moved, just moved here. Uh, well, we're, I, I promise I'd be keep this tight and here I am rambling. He moved here during the off season from Shiloh Christian over in Fayetteville, you know? Of course. Yeah. And it was just a quiet, uh, the family needed, had to make a move and they moved to Tulsa. And I guess somebody says, uh, by the way, uh, Keith Riggs, coach Jinx, by the way, Keith, uh, we got a family moved in. You want to meet him? Keith says, yeah. And then it's Hudson Ball, who's 6'3", 228. And I'm telling you, we'll be, um, you know, it, it just the classic example of a kid that TU needs to get involved with right now, right now, today. Like, like, and if he goes, if he ends up becoming the kind of player who's going to end up in the SEC, which I think you probably will, but at least you've tried and you've established that relationship. But, it, and, you know, the oldest adage, cliche, whatever it is in sports is you can't score if you don't shoot. And TU hadn't been scoring much around here because they haven't been shooting that much around here in football. Well, in men's basketball as well. So anyway, uh, Philip Montgomery, uh, I did detect, though, this season, and especially the last few weeks, uh, what I sensed was emotional fatigue. That's the best way I know how to put it. You just and, and you just think, man, he's been fighting that fight over there at T for eight years. That's a tough job, and <clears throat> eight years is a good long run. Um, and you know, maybe. Uh, I don't know what Phillips' immediate plan would be if he if he wants to coach next year or if he wants to take a year off, recharge, and then go coordinate for somebody or go, you know, get another head coaching job. I don't know. But uh, he's a good man who represented the school in a good way. Uh, he and his wife uh, were out in the community a good amount. Um, so so he, he did – the, what we will, what we don't know is, did he do the very best that any TU coach can do right now, with the challenges that the university has on resources and money? I don't know. Maybe forty-two and fifty-four record. Maybe, um, but I think after eight years, there's just a collective uh, agreement that you know, let's see what it looks like. With at the very least, with, with a change, you're going to have you better have at least two years of good, fresh energy and the push you get from that. So, um, but who that person is going to be, who that energy provider is going to be, G.J. Kenny, Holman Wiggins, Matt Wells, Lauren Montgomery. (laughs) Uh, I don't know. And I'm not laughing at Lauren because I think it's a clown. Uh, I'm not, I'm not clowning on that as a suggestion. You know, you know, you brought it up because you know how I feel about it. I think Lauren Montgomery would uh, would be a, a, a great coach at any level. So um, we'll see. I mean, I figure by uh, certainly, surely by Christmas, um, I would think by mid-December. Well, uh, can they – I mean, signing day's coming up, Bill. Like, I mean yeah. – No, that's right. I mean, they – I mean, on one hand, you can't – you don't want to rush it, but on the other hand – there is the second signing date in February. And then you have the, you know, the portal is such a factor now. And, and so, yeah, of course it's important. So. um, Maybe because like, I guess, you know, maybe Rick has been doing some early investigating and looking around. Uh, Maybe this is a really super fast turnaround, Uh, but um, and you're right. I mean, the mid-December signing day has been a, a game changer on uh, the decisions to make changes and and the decisions to hire certain people by a certain time. So, but I, I think it's important too that Rick better, you know, Rick is going to want to be a million percent certain and feel a million percent good about who he's going to bring in. So, yeah. uh, it's... Uh, you know, we'll see. I mean, I'm going to be uh, I'm going to be surprised if they really do. Uh, if they really, really look into Lauren Montgomery, Patrick, and are super tempted, I'll be surprised. So but but it, Holman Wiggins is, is uh, you know, he's at Alabama. 
and he's 42. And he's one of Nick Saban's top go-to guys in recruiting. So, I mean, to me, you have to – that's where you look first. And, he, like I said, he was at TU one year. So he knows – Yeah. Um, he knows his way around. Yeah. All right, Bill. Appreciate the knowledge, as always. We'll talk soon. All right. Thank you, Patrick.